Man, I'm happy to be here in Omaha. I was uh, flying in and I told uh, Wyndham and told a couple of the guys, I said, man, when I was flying in, it looked like bear country. And uh, they reminded, they said, no, 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 that was Iowa. That was not Nebraska. You, you landed in Nebraska. You're good. So uh, how, how many people are from Nebraska? Wow. How many people are not from Nebraska? All right. So I know what, I'm, what kind of joke I can tell today before I get knocked out. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Well, I'm excited about being with you and sharing. I got a chance to see the studio space upstairs, and I just want to say, wow. <laughs> wow. Did y'all know y'all were coming to that studio when you signed up to come to school here? Was that the selling point? <laughs> if that was the selling point, you can give yourselves a hand. I mean, golly. <laughs> um, one of the things I, I was sharing with uh, uh, Professor uh, Seth and um, Wyndham a little bit earlier was I had the opportunity to go to a small school. Now, um, University of Nebraska and Omaha looks, looks large in comparison to where I went to school. Uh, there were 1,200 students on the entire campus, and that uh, campus was not larger than three acres. Trust me, it's not that much land. Um, one of the things that we wrestled with during that time was um, the music department shared space with the athletic department. Now, if you don't think that's a recipe for disaster, it is. All right, so imagine that you have intermules happening uh, downstairs, and literally the studio is if this is a gym, the studio is that corner right there, right? The only thing you hear throughout the day is <laughs> of tennis shoes that's going up and down the court. And everybody is like, ah. Oh. So I guess we're recording at like 1 o'clock tonight. You know what I mean? Because after the gym got done, of course, the janitor had to come. He has to buff the floor. And the only thing he hears, <laughs> And so your recording is completely ruined. And when that wasn't happening, there's a train track that's not even a few feet away. It's like, only thing you hear is, <laughs> and so it became very annoying. Uh, in that group, uh, we, we tried to have great recordings happen in that room, and, and we did, and we did. Um, uh, in the studio, uh, they were showing me some of the mic selections that you guys have. We had one, AKG 414. We had one. Y'all, how many? One. I was up there going like, man, to be these guys right here. Oh, my. So uh, needless to say, I'm a little jealous. And so if that comes off, it, it, yeah, I meant for it to come off that way. I'm a little jealous of all of you. Because that was not my college experience. And I, you know, a little jealous, that's all. Um, I say that and I bring that up because I want to let you know that you're fortunate. That you are uh, lucky in a way to have a studio space, to have a school or recital hall, um, to have teachers that are willing to pour into you and to have the resources. Um, I went back and I visited the school uh, about... Um, about two months ago, and every now and then I try to go and I pop in on everybody. And this one event, I put the teachers out the room and say, I want to talk to the students and students by themselves. Because what I did was I, I realized that the studio was empty. It was empty. Now, we had to wait till 11 o'clock at night to 1 o'clock. And what we would do, we would have to fight about it. So if y'all see me, know that I can fight know that. Don't think y'all can jump me today. I can fight now. Because one of the things that we had to do is that we, we tried our best to schedule our time so that we could have the studio space to use, right? We want to have the studio space to use. There's only one room. It's not that much. And we all, we're a limited amount of time in which we can use it. So when, you know, 10 o'clock came around, I want to go to bed by 2. 
So I need to get the studio first. But if Alonzo is in the room, then I can't get it till he's done. So it's a whole problem, right? It's a whole problem. And we tried to work it out. And sometimes it came to blows. Sometimes, you know, you know we had to just, just put a little air in your chest and walk up on people and go, hey, man, I need the room. You know what I mean? Uh, no, nah, let me stop. <laughs> I say that to say because in a way, um, I love the way the schools have now invested in this thing called music technology. It is, it is becoming the way of the future. Um, the days in which we're showing up at, you know, studios that are gigantic and you're paying a lot of money to, to go to are kind of fading behind us a little bit. Um, the way of the future now is having a, a armed group of people uh, with knowledge of how to make the best recording using the best uh, equipment and sometimes not so much the best equipment. How do we make the best of technology now? Um, and I share that because one of the things that we've been doing here recently is that 2020 kind of exposed a lot of things for us, which kind of opened up the door of opportunity for students like you. Um, music technology is what kept a lot of churches open. Uh, music technology is what kept a lot of schools. The, tech, the, the knowledge that you're gaining right now allowed for businesses to function, for meetings to happen uh, that otherwise would have never been able to happen because we were so used to showing up. Uh, there were plenty of churches. So one of the things I get to do is I am the music director for a district of Georgia. So it expands over 20 different counties now. That may not mean a lot for y'all. Georgia has 149, 159, sorry, 159 counties. And so for, for you know, 20 of those to, to be under me, I, I feel some type of way, you know what I mean? No. Um, no, but one of the things that we did through the pandemic is that we had to walk through with music departments and pastors and, and, and musicians how in the world do you communicate this idea of what you're trying to do to the people who no longer can sit in the pews? And they were frustrated. They were kind of lost because they hadn't adapted to the direction where music technology was taking them. They weren't streaming. They weren't broadcasting live. They were just simply having service and going home. And now all of a sudden, for two years, you couldn't do that. And so how is it that we um, at least get the basic message to people, right? But then the other thing that it came is like, you mean to tell me that we could have been pre-recording and recording videos and all this type of stuff before and that we can mix it and it sounds like this or we can go get this musician to play in his bedroom and I have an extremely amazing guitar sound that is coming along and being streamed along with my, with my service? Yes, you could, right? So there's this opportunity that is exposed to us simply because we were forced into it, right? But... The flip side of it is there's a whole other side of music besides just uh, for those of us who are playing on the stage is that your job helps us communicate what we're trying to say to a world much larger um, than, than, I, than I could. So me singing up here and there's a, you know, 2,000 of you out here, if you can never hear what I say, it doesn't mean anything that I can sing, does it? because you can't hear it. Even more than that, you help give me color because I like reverb and delay and echo and my voice is a little ah, 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 mid-range heavy, so you got to dial a little bit of that back. Y'all have the ears, you know, you know how to do this, right? And so one of the things that I love is uh, some of my best friends are engineers. Some of my best friends. Why? Because I need them because I need them. So let's get to the point, the meat of why we're here. One of the things that I say is that music is collaborative. Music is collaborative. Music is collaborative. And um, you can be the best musician and still suck because there's something else that you're missing. There's something that someone else hears that you may not. I have a friend, uh, his name is David, David Harris. David is, he's won two Grammys now and one Emmy. Uh, let me finish the part of that story that I started with at LaGrange College. LaGrange College was a small school, 1,200 students, right? 
So every two years, we were guaranteed to have a class full of amazing musicians. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. 1998, we had incredible musicians. It kind of skipped 99, skipped 99. Yet 2000, you had amazing musicians. You, you skipped 2001. 2002, I came in. And man, I brought all the smoke. No, let me stop. All right, 2004, 2006, 2008, 2010. I shared this last night that in that, eight, that, that particular year range, you have nine Grammys and three Emmys that came from that school. Not because we were that good. We were very collaborative. We were small and we knew that we had to depend on somebody else. So I would be in the studio and I'm like, I got it. It's the best track ever. David walks in and goes, bro, that sucks. Bro, what's this? And I'm thinking, man, this is going to be the next best thing, right? Nah. David walked in and picked it apart and he's like, man, so you have so much empty space sonically. What? I mean, I'm playing. Yeah, you're just playing a lot of keys and it's loud, but it's all right here. It's everything is taking up this mid rangey area, you know, competing for where the vocals are supposed to be. You're just do, 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 do. and David would come in and go like, yeah, we're going to strip away all your track and go this, 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 this. All right. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Rhythm. You don't hear rhythm, do you? I mean, I play keys. I don't think like a drummer. And he would come in and go, this can go. If the beat is dun, 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 what are going on all these rhythms that are happening? And I'm like, wait a minute. We will leave the session. It'd be like amazing, right? I mean, that guy has two Grammys, one Emmy. And I realized then I was missing a whole point. I was going to school with somebody who was going to be amazing at the end. And it meant that I should have been collaborating with him a whole lot sooner. Some of you are just beginning your journey here at UNO, right? Have you partnered yet with an upperclassman that you can connect with and collaborate with? Think about if you start where they're ending. If you start where they're ending. If you can somehow pull information from them that they already spent three years learning and you just start. It's amazing, right? Your floor is their ceiling. Music is collaborative. Because music is collaborative, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, that we can't be married to every idea that we think is good. We can't be married to every idea that we think is good. You have to be willing to let go of some of those ideas. Now, I started working with this band called The Heavy. This band is out of the, the UK. And uh, one day they're passing through Columbus and they uh, get escorted up to the studio. And I'm up there and I want to let you know this. I was killing Man, you couldn't find a better musician or singer that day. I was smoking. I had my partner, uh, Marsha Ruffin, in the studio with me, and we are killing music, right? It's amazing. They walk up and go like, bro, we want y'all to record on our record. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Make the numbers work for me. I can do it for you. I can do it. And I was happy about it. They gave me the opportunity. One of the things I shared is that I came to the studio with all of my ideas of how really I wanted my vocals to sound. How did I want my vocal arrangements to sound? And man, I walked in, I'm ready to go. And I start singing, and you know, we got the, the, the rest of the singers singing. And uh, artists came on the intercom, eh, it's too smooth. Huh? It's too smooth. To what? Too smooth, man. To what? It's too smooth. Too much soul. You're doing too much. Strip it back a little bit. I was like, uh, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I knew my stuff was better, right? No, no I'm gonna stop. No, I, I followed the vision of what he wanted, right? 
And uh, what he wanted was basic, but I wasn't seeing the big picture of what he was looking for, right? So he had the idea of strings, horns, of, of you know, uh, if I could have these big, heavy drums here and your vocals are cluttering the space. And so when he and I were going back and forth, it was like, hey, I mean, just do what you want to do, but eh, eh. When he let mistakes slide, I realized that he was never going to keep it. Know that whenever a mistake, they just keep letting you, you know, make the same mistake. They're not going to keep it. Just, just, just stop wasting time coming out the booth. Uh, anyway, but we were just talking and having a great time. So we hear the record. And the record comes back. The record is amazing, and he keeps just the melody lines only. And it requires that I not be so married to the ideas that I had, because I was only a part of the picture, not the full picture. So music is collaborative, but I can't be married to every idea. Every idea that I have is not great. Every idea you hear tonight, let me go ahead and preface this. Every idea you hear tonight is not going to be great either. I'm going to try to make my way through. No. Nobody called that joke besides you. Thank you. Thank you. you you're going to be my guy all night. I'm going to look for this red hat all night. So when I tell jokes, I'm, I'm going to look at you. It, it ain't got to be funny. Just laugh. OK, cool. All right. So what happens um, in music is sometimes you have the opportunity to share everything, to share just the one thing they're asking you for. And then the next thing is, is throw all your ideas at the window. See what sticks. It may all stick. None of it may stick. But you, you can't leave the room without the ideas on the table, right? Uh, music is collaborative, but don't be married to every idea. The last thing is have fun with it. Have fun with it. In that school called LaGrange College, one of the things I will tell you that we did is that we had fun. Have fun with it. I, I, I get it. You're an academic. I, I know. I, I, I know. You're trying to make an A. I know. You're trying to get your degree. I know, I get it, but you got to learn to have fun with it. You'll be surprised of how many more ideas that are creative come out of the moments that you're having fun versus the moment you're trying to force the thing to happen. I promise you, have fun with it. If it's frustrating you and you <clears throat> leave it, come back to it when you can begin to get your mind in the space of Let's have fun with it. We find rhythms and songs of things to add in our recordings because we start dancing. You ever just start dancing and fi try to figure out where your body is moving? So if this is dun, 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 my hand is doing something different. We would find rhythms just by dancing around the room and go like, that's it. Add this right here. And then we'll stop. We'll come back. All right, that's it. Add this right here. Have fun with it. Give yourself the space, the space to be creative. Sometimes um, when we're talking about songwriting, I was sharing this with a friend of mine, is that some of the funnest songs that we've ever written together were the ones when we were just walked outside and had a beer. It was the best lyrics came to my mind at that moment, like, oh, that's it. Hey, bro, let's go record this. Hey, man, right now? Yeah, right now. Put your beer on ice. Let's go. You know what I mean? Because we're having a great time with it, right? And so sometimes you can give yourself the opportunity and the space to be more creative if you just start having fun. Now, don't have fun in Schaefer's class too much now because I don't want him to squash every bit of it. But, you know, when you're having your own studio project, have fun with it. It is at that moment you can begin to become creative. And you're a much, you're much better person to hang out with when you're having fun, right? 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 Right. And now, um, uh, that's kind of what I want to share. I just, I just be, be collaborative. Be collaborative. Don't be married to every idea. Every idea that you have is not good. Just accept the fact. It's not, every idea is not good. Um, and some ideas can be tweaked and made better uh, because of the other people that we have in the room with us, right? And the last thing, have fun with it, right? All right, so uh, what time is it? I want to make sure I leave you enough time to, yes, all right, I'm on it, I'm on it now, which means I leave you enough time to ask some questions. And I want to show you a couple of jams that we did and some things when I, 
let go and not married to some music. And then uh, sometimes I was married to some music that was not great. So uh, we're going to play just 30 seconds of those clips. Okay. I don't have a question. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> so... When you're working with artists in the studio in kind of like a producer capacity, gotcha. or even if you're just working as a hired gun as a musician, would you say that you stick in a specific style or play a variety of styles? What, what's your approach to working with artists? Um, it, it depends, and it depends from artist to artist. One is I try to adjust my playing style to the style of the artist. If the artist is a uh, country singer, then I don't come in playing gospel chops, right? So I try to, to find music that I think represents the artist as much as possible uh, and try to play closer to that style uh, for them. Uh, now, I have been told by those artists, I didn't hire you to play what I wanted you to play because I already knew who you were before I walked in the room. I was asking you to kind of help me take the song to another place. Once again, they recognize that their, their ideas are not, they want to be collaborative in the effort, right? And so it's at that moment I go like, oh, well then we can do this. Oh, we can do this. Or we can do this. And uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say that too. Always have the, the idea of possibilities. Don't, don't just sing one thing. Don't just play one thing. Have five or six other options there with you so that you can always provide um, the opportunity. i never forget, I was going into an audition to play for a tour. I was going to play bass, and I had one of my favorite basses, right? But made by this guy in Georgia named Kurt, Kurt, uh, Kurt Kerbo. And uh, that's before Court. I'm not, I'm not digging on Court, but I'm just saying, before Court bought his designs, he was literally in the mountains of uh, North Georgia making these bases. He made this one called the International Petite. I had a six string and I was, that was my baby. I took it everywhere I went and every session I wanted to play this one bass because it felt so good. It was light and I had a six string so I can go and do some creative stuff up top. Well, the artist was like, nah, hate it. So I reached in the back. I grabbed my uh, five string uh, jazz Fender. I had a J retro preamp in it. And I'm like, yep, I sound like Marcus Miller. And the artist said, nah, that sucks even worse. Set that one aside, I reached back. I grabbed this Squire P bass and she loved it. I'm like, wait, whoa, I paid how much for these? And this is, there's a particular tone about that bass that I absolutely love. That's the one you're playing for the tour. What? Man, I got 60 shows with this piece of junk. You know? So uh, just being, being able to provide options for the people that you, are, that you are assisting. If you're a musician or even if you are an engineer and you're like, uh, have the idea of possibilities in your head always when working. Sometimes it may be what they're looking for. Other times... Comes back to the fact, don't be married to your idea. It may not be what they're looking for, but you need to have the options. Did I answer your question? That's probably too much, right? <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. How do you like shoot someone's idea again? I mean, like, right, right. Uh, so, um, there are two ways. One is you can just completely be nasty about it. <laughs> just cut straight to the chase, cut across the field, get to it, and you'll never work with that person again. All right. Um, and one way to do it is to accept what is good about it. Is always begin a statement for a collaborative idea that I don't like what I do like about it. Man, I really like the tone of that, but hey, huh. That's a cool melody idea, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. Can we try? And so once you start beginning with what you do like, you actually give that person a little bit more direction of how to, to guide their ideas. So if I come in and I'm playing uh, 
uh, roads and you really don't want the sound of roads. You can say, hey man, I really like the ideas you're playing, but it's just kind of the roads idea. That allows for me to let go of the roads idea and to follow down this path to where you are going. Uh, and, and, and so always start with what you do like, but then quickly, don't linger there too long, quickly go to what you don't like and then that helps direct the conversation. Um, be quick about it. Don't waste your time. Okay. Now, out of all of you, I got two questions. All right. See, see, I, I love them. All right. You're going to be the second. Go for it. Yeah, do you have any like, tips or tricks that you use to get into a creative mindset? Like, do you have any like, it depends on, if I'm having a complete block, I completely just walk away from everything. If I'm having one of those moments where melodies are not coming to me, chords are not coming to me, and if we're writing a song, lyrics are not coming to me, I make it a point to just stop forcing it. Just stop. I go do something completely different, whether that's uh, watching, I'll, I'll start a Netflix something, you know what I mean? I would do something, and it's out of the ordinary. So uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, so for me, TV is the pleasure. TV is when, I, uh, is when I can unwind. And so because I'm, look at my, I'm already adjusted to television is my unwind. Uh, when I'm overwhelmed, I, I unwind. If it's things are flowing, but I just can't quite get where, where the next idea, then it begins to be, uh, can I listen to something? And so there have been ideas for songs that are that are gospel. Like if I'm having to play a gospel song and I'm going like, ah, chordal structure is just not doing it. Uh, I may not always go back and listen to another gospel song, but I may pull up some old jazz thing. I may pull up an old uh, or older gospel, you know, older Timothy Wright type approach and go like, OK. All right, so I just need something to spark something new because I'm just spinning my wheels. And so it's, it's kind of if nothing is happening, let nothing happen. If something is happening, but I just can't get to where I want, I'm looking for something to spark a new idea. And a lot of times listening is where I get that from. I'll go dig up. Whoever came up with YouTube is amazing. So I'll go, you know, and just use that world or Spotify or something to just try to figure out what's the next thing. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just curious, like, what do you, what do you listen to in, like, the jazz world? Oh, right, right now I'm completely on Robert Glasper. I'm uh, completely on Samara Joy and uh, Cecil Savant. Uh, Gregory Porter will always be in my playlist as well as Liz Wright. So um, more so for me as vocals. Uh, a lot of those are vocalists except uh, Robert Glasper who cannot sing. Uh, he, he is, he's a friend. So, so Robert, I'm just messing with you, bro. All right, so that, so he'll get up and he'll try. But, uh, but it is, it is a lot of jazz vocalists. You hear the pianist behind them, and I'll be trying to pick up how they're accompanying people. Uh, but there's something about, yeah. Uh, if you have not heard of any of those names I just mentioned, I beg you to go listen. Like, Samara Joy is everything, and so is Cecil Svant. Ah, oh, amazing. So it was uh, sound and color. Uh, Boy, they had already done Boys and Girls, Sound and Color was the one that we started, and then every record that Brittany Howard has done since that has been a collaborative thing, so, yeah. It's my favorite album. I mean, Sound and Color. <laughs> it, was, it, was a really, it was really good, really good. Do you ever find yourself in a position where you are, like you say, hired to do a very specific thing, and you are Okay. Okay. So I, I think it's uh, approaching the conversation. Um, 
I asked for a certain amount of time. So I've been working on projects before where they have, there's an idea that they were looking for, and we worked our behinds to get to that idea. But then I say, but can you give me the latitude of 30 minutes? Can I try a couple of things real quick? Um, and it was in that moment that they were going, whoa, 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 what is this? What is that idea? Or they were like, yeah, got it, but I think we got what we need. But you put a time limit, limit on it for them so that they understood you were not just going, going on a wild goose chase for forever. But I do have, a, but the other thing is you don't want to waste the time that's already allotted for what they're trying to do. So I will go, hey, listen, man, uh, when we get done with this or when you kind of feel that you've given them what they're looking for, ask for the latitude for a little bit more. And put a time on it. Hey, man, can you spare about 15? I want to try two ideas real quick. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you know, you go ahead and let them know I'm not married to the idea, but I do think it's a good one. You know what I mean? And so if you give me 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe, uh, let me try a couple of things, and then we'll go from there. Sometimes there was one time I was working with the heavy, and they did this song called What Makes a Good Man. And everything about the Heavy's records, they want melody. That's all they want. Da, 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 da. It's one line. And I heard this, What Makes a Good Man. I'm like, bro, this song is screaming parts. It's screaming big vocals, man. It's screaming it. Can you, can, can you give me 20? And I turn around to the vocalist. I go like, hey, here's what we're going to do real quick. And let's do it. And we did it. It only took about five, ten minutes for us to get a couple of takes that were like really good. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go down that, let's go down that, you know. I'm like, and that's what made the record. Uh, now, all of it didn't make it from other songs that we were trying to try those ideas on. But that particular one, yeah, that one made the record. And it's amazing. I'll show that one to you. So um, can you talk a little bit about some of the, the bigger artists that you've worked with and, and their musicianship level uh, and and your kind of communication with those artists. Okay. okay. All right. So um, I, I think it's important, and, and we, we just kind of started this conversation earlier uh, before you guys arrived in the room. We were doing this without you. So let me catch you up. Now, now um, what we're or sharing is a lot of the bigger artists that, we, that, I've, that I've worked with I came to a realization real quick, they weren't schooled. They weren't people that can walk in and say, hey man, I want this particular chord with this bass line and this solo needs to be like this. They, have, they didn't have the vocabulary to really describe to me. Uh, but we, we laugh with Brittany Howard now. We're like, hey Brittany, um, it's clear that your thinking is not that of, of, of a person that's going to school. Because, I mean, her parts are like, duh, uh, duh, 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 duh. it's hard for me to learn this. Let me, let, me, let me try to figure this out. But what happens is a lot of times they'll, they'll give you what they're feeling. They'll say, so right here, it, I kind of kind of want to be like this. Uh, um, uh, and it's because they don't have the vocabulary to really show it with you, share it with you. They don't know to tell you that I really want... Uh, a dead crescendo, a crescendo, a dead crescendo. They don't know that. It's like, hey, I just want to be all right here. I want to be real big. You know, that's, that's the only thing they know how to say. And so a lot of times, uh, my job in the studio is to go, okay, 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 okay. So in the best way you can, describe what you're trying to achieve right now. And a lot of times it's like, and they'll, in the best way they can go, you know, and right here it's got to get real big, and then it's got to go, and then right here I want to, everything to just drop. Okay, all right. So, all right, guys, and so you turn around to the musician with whom you do have a vocabulary, and you say, hey, right here, this is what we're going to do. And you begin to describe, you have, I, I told this to uh, one artist, he's like, bim -bim 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 -bim. hey, bro, these are string players. They read parts. They, they don't just go <laughs> from you just saying, bim -bim 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 -bim. give me a second. All right, guys, this is what he wants. <laughs> and they played it amazing. So a lot of times in the room, you are the translator. It's your job to then take whatever the artist is kind of looking for in whatever way they can best describe it to you, right? 
And you can be that person that, that becomes a translator for the other musicians in the room because you do share vocabulary. You do know that he wanted a nine right here. Yeah, I'll just add this note on top. What is, what is that chord called? You know what I mean? Right here, we're trying to play this right here, right here. Uh, I'm playing F. I'm playing. All right, guys, what he's describing here is, and I mean, and you do it in the way of just quickly going like, hey, guys, right here. And so a lot of times it's your job to just turn around and become that translator, that mediator in the room that kind of helps the musicians with whom you do share that vocabulary with understand what the artist books. A lot of the artists that are blowing up, that are huge, have never gone to school for music like you. They've never studied music theory. They, they don't know uh, music history the way you've had to study it. They don't know music technology the way you had to study it and dive into it. I laugh a lot of times because I shared this with uh, Wyndham. I was like, man, I, I call Wyndham more than I probably should. Hey, bro, I, I got a clean take, but I don't like what it sounds like. I don't even know what to tell you, bro. Uh, uh, I, I just know it's just too mid ranging And he'll get the mix and go like, I think this is what you're looking for. What you think about that? That's it. That's it, man. That's it. I don't know, but it's, it's, he becomes that person that takes the idea of what I'm trying to describe the best way I can and translate it in a way that it becomes pleasurable for every one of you to hear. So don't ever let that slip. That's why your education is very, very important. It is vital. I'm just saying. If you're wondering what you're spending it on, that's what you're spending it on. All right. So. Uh, we're going to bump the system. We're going for 10 now. <laughs> no. uh, I, had, I think I had two more people, and I'll make my answer real short there. What are some of your like, favorite, favorite and least favorite things that people do when you work with them? Like, what are things that you enjoy that people do when you work with them? Like, what are some of your favorite things that you enjoy that people do when you work with them? I think one of the things for me is, and you're going you're gonna to think this is completely like crazy, but I, I love to have a free day. I love to have a free day where we're just getting to know each other and for me to know what you, you know, who you are, how you are. I like those. Even if it's not a free day, if it's a free time. So I don't like walking into a session where I start working, where sessions at 12 and we start working at 12 because I have no point of reference of you as a person, what you like, what your working habits in the studio. So I like to take a moment for us to, let's spend an hour, let's try to figure this out, me, you, how we like to work. Because once I start working, I'm actually working. I don't want to get to know you while I'm working. Like, don't stop me in the middle of an idea. Don't, don't try to tell me a joke right now. I'm in the middle of trying to execute everything you want me to do, right? So I like to kind of have this social moment in the beginning and then get into working. Um, I don't like a person who's over, over dramatic about everything. Don't, don't be, if it was a bad idea, just say it was a bad idea, we move on to the next. Don't give me a 10 minute lecture on why it's a bad idea. Just say you don't like it, let's move on, you know what I mean? I know it's weird to hear me say that, but that's what, I'm, that's, that's what I don't like. You know, just move along. I had one more person. Um, if you, um, um, do you have any problems with other music influencing your own? Um, like if you're if you're trying to make something, you flesh it out, and you're like, this is literally just another song. Does that happen often for you? It has you happened. Know? It has happened. It has happened in such a way that I didn't realize it had had happened until I went back to listen to the other person. I uh, I'm a huge fan of this guy named Charles Bradley. Charles Bradley is like. Yeah. So before Charles passed, he and I were like, hey, bro, let's go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, right? I did the song, How Long Has Been Going On? How Long? I put that in mind. It wasn't until I went back and listened to Charles record, like, oh, snap. Bro, I'm glad we didn't release none of that one. Because <laughs> that's, that's Charles, you know what I mean? But I, I found that I. I love his style. I love Lee Fields and the impressions. And so I found that sometimes I'm fighting the temptation or I'm fighting their influence in my music in a way. I love it, but by the same token, I'm not trying to replicate them or to steal from them. Uh, 
but because I love it so much, it does creep, and then I just have to rethink how to do it. All right. Anybody? I'm going to be like Homer, Homer Simpson, just going to do this. Yeah. I think I did it. Uh-oh. It logged out. While he's doing that, one more. Anybody? <laughs> I was going to say, do you see that some parts of the like, education, like going to education, gets in the way so much of your creative process? Yes. In the terms of, like, I know if you're moving up close enough, like, so you get like, stuck in like, the 12 bar blues direction. Does that actually yes. like, mess up your creative process? It does. Very much so. Uh, we were having this. Okay, so let me, and we may not get to play this because this is going to be the story I got to tell. Okay, so I shared with uh, 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 Dr. Schaefer earlier that um, uh, what happened for me is I began to learn music in church and with my mother and with my mother's family, right? So it was very intuitive. It was very feeling. It was you walk in our church and there is no, they don't send out this, hey man, we're playing this song this week. No, that's not the church I grew up in. The church I grew up in was, you showed up at church and you were sitting on the piano and somebody just started, Jesus on the main line, tell me what you, and you gotta go, do, 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 do. All right, guys, they're in this key right here and you had to figure out, okay, where does this go? Where does this go? And we had all these great musicians that literally, that was forming a pipeline of us just coming after the other, right? And so we began to play music how we felt, bless you, that we, that we began to play music how we felt it, how we heard it, how, how it seemed to be flowing, you know what I mean? And it wasn't till I got to college or a little bit before where some of the guys who had left before I had graduated and came back and started going like, hey man, do you know this is called this? And they're sharing their music knowledge with us. I'm literally learning the names of chords after already playing them for years, you know what I mean? Not even knowing what they were, right? And so what I began to say is a lot of times what happened for me was um, because this has to flow like this or my idea, the approach to solos was already, here's the scale. And you choose these notes from this scale that it began to rob me of what I really felt. You know what I mean? And so I had to find a way to marry both of those ideas. Now I have the knowledge, I have the vocabulary to, 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 to begin to express what I need to express, but I need to get back to what I feel. And in this moment, what I feel isn't falling within this pattern. A lot of times, uh, and I'll let him share more about this idea, a lot of times music is, music is, music education is catching up to what we feel. Like, we've already been playing this chord. Now we're having to bring knowledge to or name it now that we've accepted that it's, that's what it is, right? And so I think that uh, in a way, uh, for me, I have to then go shake it and go, and that's, that's when Netflix comes in handy. Uh, Night Agent is what I'm on right now. So in case anybody want to catch up with me, I'm on Night Agent right now on episode five. You can catch up with me. All right. uh, but that's sometimes when I have, to, I have to go back to this place of feeling or that's when I have to listen to things that I go like, B.B. King wasn't sitting here thinking about this particular scale when he was making Lucille talk. So let me, let, me, let me emerge myself in music that helps me feel right now. All right, I was going to show y'all something, but. Uh... So the heavy, what makes a good man? Have y'all heard that one before? Yeah. All right, so cool. That's all I was going to show you then. <laughs> so that was after all the sessions of me trying to put harmonies on everything and to sing big choir parts to sound gospelly, we finally got to that place of throw your ideas at this one. And we came up with some good stuff. Uh... Who's working on something now? Anybody have a record they're working on? I mean, if you need a session player, I mean, my number is, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and they want to sound this.
can't dance, so I can't dance with it, so. All right, I got to let you go because we all, we're over time. To, the, to answer your question that like we talked about earlier, uh, the idea, all those harmonies, the only thing they wanted was, tell me now what makes a good man. That's all they wanted. They didn't want all those harmonies. They didn't hear all those harmonies. Give me 20. Give me about 15, 20. Hey, guys, sing this. And da, 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 da. It's, it's a singing line that they took and they barred it and they put it for the strings. So while they didn't use the voice doing it, they, they took the idea. And those checks look great. That's all I'm telling you. Uh, with that being said, hey, y'all, thank y'all for being here. And I, I, can I ask y'all if I, I know you may have been required to come tonight, but I don't want to sing to five people since we already friends. Can y'all come out tonight so I can play with my friends? You know, I, I want my friends in the room. Y'all y'all good? Y'all going to be there? I'm looking for this red hat, man. All right.